Hey guys, it's day six of Dr. Morse's Monkey Diet Challenge. So far, I'm feeling great on the grapes. I'm really grateful for the grounding that yesterday's salad brought me, but I'm really grateful to be back on the grapes today. I was feeling it this morning, and we'll get into that shortly. So you guys know the deal. I started my day with my tinctures and my herbal tea. It was peppermint tea again because I have been in love with some peppermint tea recently. And then throughout the day, I grazed on about one and a half pounds of these jumbo, and guys, I do mean jumbo red and black grapes and then I had about a half pound of grapes left over I ran to the store and grabbed some more black and green grapes and I juiced all of those beautiful three colored grapes together with a lemon and I am still working on some of that juice here but it is phenomenal nice and astringent I can literally feel this pulling on my lymph as uh, as it goes throughout my body and I'm really grateful um, eating the grapes has been incredible. I don't feel as hungry because I'm getting the water and the fiber and all of the phytonutrients and antioxidants and everything else attached to the fiber. So it's helping to control that blood sugar response and help to keep me satiated throughout the day. But as I struggle to get grapes in in the night, I find that the juices are really beneficial to help get that last push of hydration and alkalinity into my body before I retire for the night. But by all means, you could always start your day this way and then finish it with the solid fruit. By all means, switch it up and see what works best for you. So today I want to talk about the healing crisis, how different people experience the healing crisis and some simple things that we can use at home to help get us through those periods. So uh, for obviously the last six days I've been eating nothing but grapes, um, drinking grape juice, minus yesterday's salad, but I still had grapes throughout the day as well. And before this protocol, I had also been starting my day with a big meal of grapes every morning. So I made sure to work my way up to a more raw food diet. Even though I was still eating cooked foods, I was increasing the amount of raw food that I was eating to prepare my body for this. And it's okay, obviously, to jump into a raw food challenge, that's how we learn what our bodies do and what we can handle and how we can work through it. But it is very helpful to obviously work your way into it. Case in point, let's talk about my healing crises versus my husband's healing crises. Poor guy. Oh man. So he is in bed and he's been, he's been pretty much sleeping most of the day. Um, lots of body aches and pains a lot of head congestion, especially at the base of his neck and sinuses and a really, really sore throat. Um, I have experienced a couple aches and pains and um, some moving of mucus, which I'm very grateful for. Now, this kind of highlights a few things, and so I want to take a little bit of time to kind of dig into what we can gather from these two different scenarios. When we start to hydrate a very dehydrated body, keep in mind that that dehydrated body is holding on to a lot of acidic waste, and our bodies are kind of like an opportunist, right? <laughs> if you give them an inch, they will, they will take it. They are going to take it and they are going to use that opportunity to clean house. So as soon as you give a very dehydrated body some hydration and alkaline chemistry, it's going to want to purge off very quickly these outer layers of lymph because they are the layers that are going to hydrate and move the quickest. And this is less of an acidic load that your body then has to deal with. Now, my husband has struggled with kidney stones his whole life. And previous to us meeting and, and us really changing his diet, he was passing a kidney stone roughly every six months. I, I, like, I can't even fathom that, guys. I cannot even fathom that. And once we put him on a plant-based diet and really upped his hydration and paid attention to his kidney filtration, lo and behold, kidney stones have stopped occurring. He did have one early on, 
and that was after a stint of some not so great foods. <laughs> we'll keep it at that. But isn't it incredible to see how quickly the body wants to purge this old waste? Now, the more that we hydrate our bodies and the more that we clean out our bodies, the longer that it takes for us to experience these deep cleansing periods. Friends, I was much more like my husband five, six years ago when I was first getting into this. I had this big goal that I wanted to do a whole month on nothing but fruit. And I lasted one week <laughs> and was miserable the whole time, right? Because I didn't quite understand what my body was doing. I, I didn't have all of the tools to help my body through it. But over the years, you build that experience and that knowledge. And then all of a sudden, the healing crisis is something to celebrate and something to get excited about. And it's something that you want to keep pushing through because you want to see how much of this um, old waste you can get out. What's really exciting, friends, is whenever you stop paying attention so much to necessarily how much your body is purging, let's start to pay attention to what aches and pains are missing. For me, that is why I started this challenge. This is why I wanted to take a deep dive into some raw food for a period. I've been getting a lot of breast pain throughout the whole month. It doesn't matter if it's on my cycle or middle schmerz. It was the entire month. And uh, we know that aches and pains are a sign of old waste. It's old acidic waste that is, is burning and damaging these tissues. So we have to hydrate and we have to alkalize to get that waste out of those tissues. And lo and behold, friends, for the last six days while I've been on raw food and mostly grapes, no breast pain. No breast pain. And I'm also celebrating my husband's healing crisis despite how uncomfortable that is for him, but it's a fabulous sign that his tissues are hydrating and alkalizing as well. These are his top layers of lymphatic congestion that are hitting the road. They are leaving his body. And he has not been eating all grapes. He has still been eating some meat. He's been eating some eggs and cheese. He's been eating cooked foods. But you know what he has been doing? He's been joining me for a bowl of grapes every night. And that's literally all it took. A small bowl of grapes on top of all of this other congesting food. And his body is still purging waste. So what does that tell you? How powerful fruit is. Now, when we get these really uncomfortable healing crisis symptoms, we want them to stop. That's understandable, friends. We don't like pain. We don't like discomfort. We want to really not be aware of our body. Um, and that is a sign of being at ease or the lack of dis-ease, right? So for my husband's sore throat, I made him our throat coat tea. I did make a video on that sometime last year. Go check that out if you haven't already. If you're going through your own healing crisis and you're really struggling with some pain in your throat, help cool it down with some anti-inflammatory herbs that help to coat your mucous membranes. A couple other things that I have on hand to help us through a healing crisis at home would be a really good herbal antispasmodic like Dr. Morse's Spasm Calm. I also released a video recently on how to make your own Spasm Calm. So again, if you are investing in your own herbs, you can create your own formulas and the ratios you can play around with and see what works best for you. Uh, and here, I also have a homemade yarrow tincture or extract. Yarrow, moonshine yarrow is a flower essence. And this bad boy I've used with um, emotional instability during the healing crisis. When we start to clean the physical, the emotional detox is right behind it. So be prepared for it, friends. Do not be surprised if you're extra irritable and sensitive and angry and, <laughs> you know, you feel manic and, and depressed at times. This is all very normal. Yes, it is uncomfortable. I'm sorry, friends, there's no way around it. But if we want to get the junk out, we have to realize that toxins and acids burn twice. One's going in and one's coming out. So be strong, 
stick with this, friends. Let's continue to work through the healing crises that do arise. However, um, in very depleted and chronic conditions, it is possible, more than possible, to have very intense healing crises. For these cases, please find a detox specialist to work with. Find someone that you feel comfortable working with, someone that can help you understand and work through those symptoms to help mitigate because sometimes it is necessary to pull back a little bit to rebuild and allow your body's resources to replenish before you purge and, and move forward again, right? Sometimes we have to take a step back before we can take two forward and that's okay, friends. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid of that. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of that beautiful ebb and flow. So keep it flowing. Let me know what questions you guys have about the healing crisis because it does vary so much between individuals. It really depends on the level of lymphatic congestion a person has. It depends on their constitution, how, how well their body functions. Are their eliminative organs working well enough to purge out this, this uh, waste? And it also depends on how well your kidneys are filtering. So again, friends, make sure that you are testing your kidney filtration. If your kidneys are not filtering well, do not push anything that is too lymphatic, anything that will pull and move lymph. We don't want to stir things up before the waste has a way out. So that's it for today. Let me know what questions you have. Good luck on this journey, friends. We have just one more week left. Tomorrow is day seven. Like, I can't believe it. Already halfway through this. Have a great night, friends. I'll see you for day seven tomorrow.